Now that we've actually seen all seven logic gates and understand how they work, it's time now to actually go one level up by stringing them together and using them to create more complicated logic. You're watching episode 4 of Logic Components. Hello and welcome back to Logic Components. Today, we're going to start stringing together multiple gates. Now, this can be quite a difficult idea to express, which is why you realize in the past two episodes when I introduced the gates to you, I actually showed you a little symbol. All these symbols of logic gates help us by actually allowing us to draw diagrams and represent the flow of data moving from one gate to another. Now, just a little preface before we actually jump in and really combine the gates. First, why? We always ask the question why before we do something. So why combine logic gates? You see, the fact of the matter is, well, individual logic gates don't do a lot on their own. We want to string multiple ones together so that more complicated comparisons can happen. Or like I mentioned in the first episode, perhaps you can have strings of bits used to represent numbers and you're going to need to combine multiple gates to do complicated operations with strings of bits. So what we're going to do in today's episode is we're actually going to take a look at three different applications of combining logic gates. All three of them have slightly different approaches and slightly different applications. So yeah, hopefully this will give you an all-rounded kind of look at the whole concept behind combining logic gates. Now, if you've watched the previous incomplete version of this show, well, essentially, I'm recycling some of the examples. Don't mind me, I think they're still valid examples. Just, I'm gonna try and explain them better. So anyway, enough of that waffling, let us jump right into our first example. So okay, the first thing we're gonna do is something extremely intuitive. All the thought process behind this is already expressed in terms of what logic gates can do. And with such a setup, well, it shouldn't be too difficult to actually comprehend. So let's say we have a room that we want to protect, say it's a bank vault, and well, obviously someone breaking into it will be very bad. So one of the things we can do is we can actually install a motion sensor within the room. For the purposes of this example, let us assume that the motion sensor just outputs one logical bit, either false if it detects no motion, or true if it actually detects motion. So okay, we have that, but on its own, it's not very useful. Now. What we can do is we can actually install an alarm as well so that, well, if someone's moving around in there, we can actually use the motion sensor to trigger the alarm. So for the purposes of this example, let us say that the alarm takes one bit for input. The alarm will be silent if the input is false and it will begin to ring if the input is true. So right, what we can do is we can directly link the motion sensor to the alarm. Except that's not extremely useful either. I mean, there are times when a bank employee actually needs to go into the vault and you don't want that to trigger the alarm. So to work around this problem, what we're going to do is we're going to install a lock on the door. Now this lock has two different states, either it's locked or it's unlocked. And in other words, the alarm system is either armed or unarmed. Obviously if it's armed, it means that, well, there shouldn't be someone inside. If there is someone inside, it's probably an intruder. And of course, let's say if the system is armed, then this lock will output true. And if it's unarmed, it will output false. So all right, now we have two logical sources that we need to consider before we can actually decide whether or not to ring the alarm. Clearly, one gate is enough to do this, but what gate should we use? Now, surely we couldn't use an OR gate because an OR gate just needs one of these things to output true and the alarm will ring. And well, we don't want that. Obviously, as long as the system is armed, you have a 1 here, and as a result, the output will always be 1. And well, that's not how we want things to work. Instead, obviously, we have to use the AND gate. The AND gate means that if the system is armed and you detect motion within the room, then you actually have to go ahead and ring the alarm because, well, there's someone who is unauthorized in the room. So that is just the simplest, most anecdotal, most intuitive way of actually looking at combining logic. Obviously in the real world, things tend to be a little bit more complicated, but I think this example is really good to illustrate just 
a first step in thinking about combining logic gates. So right, we've looked at one example, we have two more to go. Let us now move on and take a look at one that is a little bit more abstract. This one is called an adder. The idea is, if I have two one-bit inputs, essentially, I want to add the two inputs. So now, instead of thinking of them as individual trues and falses, we now have to think of them as a number. What we want to do is we want to do some kind of operation and actually sum up the two different inputs. Now, I don't want to go too far into talking about binary number operations, so I'm just going to tell you this. When you sum two one-bit numbers together, your output is actually two bits. And the reason for that is if you actually add one and one, well, your result is actually one zero. However, instead of actually looking at things that way, we're going to say, okay, we're going to limit ourselves to a one bit output. However, there is actually one combination of input that is one one that will actually make my output overflow. And therefore, instead of producing the full answer as an output, what we're going to do is we're going to output an answer, which is one bit, as well as an overflow or carry bit. This carry bit will actually become true if there is an overflow in the calculation. Now let's take a look at the actual output portion of this entire calculation. Instead of actually looking at the gates, this time we're going to look at the truth table. Now your inputs are as follows. And what we want to do is we want to actually sum the inputs together and produce an output. So 0 and 0, that sums to 0. So 0 goes into the output column. 0, 1, well, the sum is 1. 1, 0, exactly the same, the sum is also 1. But what about 1, 1? Now, in this case, the bit we use for output would be 0, right? Because 1 plus 1 gives you 1, 0. Since we are interested only in looking at the rightmost bit, therefore the answer is 0. So then let's move on to look at the carry bit. Now, if you add 0 and 0, there is no overflow. As a result, the answer is 0. Exactly the same deal for 0, 1 and 1, 0. You don't actually overrun to another digit. And as a result, the output remains 0. The only time that we actually have to overrun is when we try to add 1 and 1. And therefore, the output has to be 1. So okay, we have two truth tables on our hands. What do we do next? If you were to take a close look at these two truth tables, you realize that they are a little bit familiar. In fact, this is your truth table for the AND gate, and that is your truth table for the XOR gate. What this means is, in order to create an adder, all we have to do is to stick those two gates in there. By taking the two bits as input and actually routing them into both those gates, the output you get from the respective gate will be the answers to this addition operation. So what we've done so far is we've actually taken two different approaches to trying to string different logic gates together. In the first, essentially, we know what we want to combine and how, and so we actually chose a logic gate to fit in there. Whereas in the second example, we started from the truth table. And just by observing the truth table, we realized that, hey, they look like existing logic gates. And only then do we plug in the actual logic gates themselves. So that's all well and good. We're going to move on now to an even more abstract example. This one is the concept of universal gates. Now, the idea is this. It was found that if you have a NAND gate, you can actually create all the other six logic gates just by using different combinations of NAND gates. The same holds for NOR gates as well. You can actually use just NOR gates to construct any other logic gate. Now, back then when I did the logic gate series, I actually sort of walked through the construction of all these different universal gates, but this time I'm not going to do that because that will be a little bit too much information. In fact, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the various wiring diagrams to create the circuits that go into your universal gates. After all, all these various combinations are kind of standardized and it's something you would find in textbooks. Also, the whole concept of actually vigorously going through the options and finally finding the correct combination is quite a bit beyond the scope of this series. If you ever need to actually see the wiring diagrams, you know, outside of this video when you're doing some kind of work, you can of course check out the Wikipedia pages for NAND logic and NOR logic. All this information is very well laid out on those pages, so all I'm going to tell you is, well, you can actually use NOR gates alone 
on end gates alone to construct the rest of the logic gates. And this is the only part that you really need to know and really need to remember. And well, those are basically the three examples I wanted to share with you with regard to actually combining logic gates. I hope you can see why we need to do that, as well as understand some of the approaches taken to achieving this purpose. Well, that basically wraps it up for this episode of Logic Components. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Hello, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, remember that I appreciate every like, favorite, and comment you give me. If you'd like to see more from me in the future, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And for more updates outside of YouTube, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at 0612TV. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.